Position, Gordon Keller just going through your picture at the moment in the RS Turbo. Alongside him will be John Hayes in the Air Cell Peugeot 205, the GTI, who we will be actually able to talk to during the race by the miracle of Air Cell. And then Thomas McGovern on the outside of the Ann Post Express Mail, uh, three litre Capri, Franco Rook who it's a very important race for him uh, this weekend because the championship is at stake between him and John Hayes. Then John Burns in the second round. Well, John, obviously coming up to the start line now, it's going to be very difficult. It's a very important race for you. John Hayes, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. This is a very important race for you indeed. It is OK, yeah. Um, my main thing is that I've got to stay ahead of Frank O'Rourke in the Open Cadet. Um, I'm not particularly worried about Gordon, though I must say I would love to win it. Um, right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. We can see you're just joining the grid now. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of silence for a while till you get the first couple of corners all sorted out. Thank and you. then we'll have a chat with you, John, when it's all relaxing stuff out there. Okey-doke. Alongside me in commentary, there will be somebody else who I'm sure will be very relaxed as it's all happening, David Kennedy. Thank you, Alan. I see the track is quite slippy. It had, had a slight rain shower a few minutes beforehand, and I noticed all the cars are on slick slicks. The clouds are getting slightly dark over the far side of the circuit, so if it does rain, we can be in for some real trouble on the slick tyres. When you're looking at Gordon Kellett, the concentration on the face of the man on pole position, the Escort RS Turbo, who's had a very successful year, been particularly successful at the Kirkison circuit, where he can really use the power of this car. There's the man, however, who has already uh, won four or maybe even five races in this uh, Telecom Air and car. Off they go. Hayes makes a beautiful start. Kellett's very slow off with the turbo, but it looks like the Capri of Thomas McGovern on the outside, who's going to lead them all down into Telecom. Hayes is nicely red, and Frank O'Rourke locking up just behind him, Kellett on the outside. John Burns is in there. It's tremendous stuff, David. A tremendous race. There's two races here. There's the race on the circuit and the race for the championship. Frank O'Rourke, car number one, right up the gearbox and exhaust pipe of car number 44, John Hayes. But Thomas McGovern it is, who streams down into Budweiser for the first time. They all seem to be uh, out of contact with each other, which is unusual for production saloons. We just saw the little GTI there scurrying through very quickly indeed. But uh, Thomas McGovern, a comparative newcomer to production saloons, really showing good stuff at the moment. Gordon Kellett in third place there, lifting a wheel on the inside as they all come streaming through Subaru and up into Dunlop uh, towards the end of the first lap. Ten laps, ten lap race, ten laps for plenty of panel bashing. And into Dunlop corner, straight into the lead, Thomas McGovern still holding that position, but under extreme pressure from John Hayes, who's under more intense pressure from Frank O'Rourke. I don't forget that uh, we have the inside view of uh, what John Hayes is seeing at this very moment. And he's seeing a very crowded track indeed as Kellett goes into the lead. Down into Telecom at the start of the second lap. And there's his trouble man on the outside. Franco Rook, who made a mistake and lost a place there because John Burns and the Toyota went up alongside him. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Franco Rook, a very experienced driver. I'm surprised he ran as wide as that, but as I said, the track is quite greasy, and if you get slightly off line, slightly off the approach into the corner, you can run wide and really lose one or two places. Peter Lynch it is in the little GTI going very quickly. They all streaming through at the back of the field. And there's one of the little Opal courses. Uh, dealer Opal Team Ireland have an entry in there with Bob Montgomery. But meanwhile, it's Kellett. And Kellett has really got this car sorted well throughout the season. RS Turbos have been very successful uh, in this class of racing in England. And Gordon has developed this car, in fact, out of the XR3i uh, version of uh, the Ford. And here it comes. And uh, still McGovern in second place, there's uh, still John Hayes in third, and maybe as it's settled down a little bit, we can try and call up John on the straight. Hello, John. It's really fast and furious out here, Tom. I'm sure it's not very exciting from there. Certainly breathing heavily anyway, John. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you perfectly. Well, you'll be relieved to know that Franco Rook is now two places behind you. Tom often makes a mistake, and it's quite likely that he'll make another one. But I see I have a cushion between myself 
and Frank of uh, John Burns, and he's a very hard charger, as you know. So if I can keep John Burns behind me, Frank will have to get by him. Right, John, we'll let you get on with it for a minute or two. So still in the lead, Gordon Kellett, fourth, first and second. John Hayes, fourth, third place, still pushing hard. Just behind the Capri of Thomas McGovern, the big three-litre Capri. Very fast in the straight, but not so nimble to the corners. And as John was telling us, he gave him a catch him in the corners, but just not able to do anything with him on the straight. And Frank O'Rourke looking very threatening there once again uh, with John Burns, but didn't get by. And John Burns has really been a thorn in the flesh for him. John Burns, who uh, holds the lap record for that class in production saloons in his little Toyota. Uh, again, uh, as always in his racing career, been sponsored by TI Auto Engineering. And there's uh, the dealer of the Team Island car just behind the red Toyota, now in picture. Frank O'Rourke, uh, what an experienced uh, driver this man is. He's already won uh, four national uh, championships in the past, and of course, very much uh, trying to get his fifth at the moment. But uh, at the moment, the ASL car is very nicely placed. It doesn't uh, be particularly worried about the two ahead of him, but he is having to get a little bit worried now about John Burns, who's really trying, as always, behind him. Yeah, John had a very difficult practice. He broke the gearbox after three laps, and uh, they were telling me they had to take the gearbox apart and weld the selector rod. So whether that's going to stay together for the race, I don't know. And he's trying on the outside of John Hayes. He's a dark horse in this one. Very, very fast at Corolla GT. So with four laps uh, completed, let's uh, just bring you up to date. I think John Hayes trying to come through. Uh, just a bit busy, I think, at the moment. It's Gordon Kellett, anyway, who leads from Thomas McGovern in second place. Then John Case, which we have not only a camera, but also a telephone link to in third place. John Burns doing a nice job for Hayes at the moment as he's rather holding up uh, the fifth place man, Frank O'Rourke, who must get by, must get by Hayes to win the championship. And then behind him, Michael Fitzgerald, another very accomplished uh, three-litre Capri driver. A lot of jostling for the first four or five places there. Everybody covering the inside line, not to let the other driver down the inside. Through the corners there, to Subaru corner, to left, right, left, right. Very difficult complex. You've really got to keep the car nicely balanced. If you run out wide, you leave yourself quite easily to be overtaken on a run up to Dunlop corner. And Gordon Kellett moving over to the inside to keep Thomas McGovern back. Thomas needs a good straight line out of this corner to take full advantage of his power to try and do something with Gordon Kellett. So we got Fords, first and second. And Michael Fitzgerald uh, got past, in fact, the Opal on that occasion, and that's his really uh, making it not a bit easy for Franco Rook to take this championship. So Fitzgerald up a place in a very late breaking maneuver as they came into uh, the top corner, Dunlop that time. So there's Fitzgerald in the red and white Capri. And now John Hayes. Uh, good news right, we have for you. Keep talking to us, John. That looked like a big moment, John. Oh, I didn't have a bit of a moment there because he's absolutely on the hairy edge of things. And there's definitely no room for me, you know. But uh, all I do is try and hurry him as much as I can and hope he make a mistake. Well, John, you will be relieved to know that Frank O'Rourke is now three places behind you. So, uh, as you can hear, John Hayes uh, is still amazingly able to talk to us as he drives a race. That's incredible, David. Yeah, very difficult thing to do. He's breathing very heavy. We can hear him pant and puff there while he's trying his best to get by Thomas McGovern. But he's in a secure place in the Dunlop Championship because Frank O'Rourke is back in fifth place and dropping back. Now, this really is superb stuff. Uh, the first three now 
pulling away a little bit for the second three, so uh, breaking up a little bit as uh, they are on their seventh lap of this 10-lap uh, air cell race. And what entertainment they're giving the huge crowd here at Mandela today. Gordon Kellett leads, Thomas McGovern in second place, John Hayes in third place, and right up the bumper of that uh, three-litre Capri, and coming alongside, we thought, there for a second. Then it's John Burns, and then uh, we have Michael Fitzgerald, only 29 years old, uh, from Dublin, uh, company director, again new into motor racing and showing great talent, look at Burns, right off the outside that time, as Michael Fitzgerald gets alongside him, can he go up another place? I think uh, I think he's going to lose the position, Michael Fitzgerald, the Capri, three litre Capri, will have the legs most definitely of the Toyota, and he has, he's got the place, now, now there could be the pressure for, for, for John Hayes from Michael Fitzgerald, and out, and he spun, Des Burns, he spun, John Burns has spun. John Burns not only spun, but uh, even before that, we had the other championship contender, Franco Rook from Wexford, in the Opel, shadowing past the Capri and getting past John Burns. And here's Franco Rook in very aggressive move. The two-liter GSI Cadet, a new car this year, getting a great advantage from that extra CC and extra power, as we've seen in both rallies and racing. A very frustrating situation for Frank O'Rourke. He isn't on the tail of John Hayes. He has to, John Hayes. He has to get past Michael Fitzgerald to get up in there and into the action. He's got his work fully cut out, and all the while, John Hayes is getting away. John has a three-point lead, the championship over Frank O'Rourke. And really, it was a couple of laps back, uh, just about this place, that uh, Fitzgerald got past Frank O'Rourke, and that could have been a fatal mistake. And Hayes is going to do it. John, can you talk to us? Congratulations, John, you've done it. It was hard work. I tell you that. I don't give a hope of touching God now, though. I should get away from home a little bit now. I don't know. Where will you have the advantage? Come on, John. Here we go. Well, uh, they say that the heartbeat of a driver goes up, but certainly the breathing rate, David Kennedy, goes up. We can see him working there. Yeah, a lot of pressure on. Really, he wants to keep as far away from Franco Rourke as possible and secure his position in second place. But not just that, he's really given us a fantastic race. But John, it's only so many years experience, 30 years driving racing cars. His car is uh, number 88. Not 30 years, I've got to be 30 <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing that you can hear the things that really matter, John. Well, you're on your last lap now, John. We're All going right. to watch you. Okay. So just to recap, uh, we have still Gordon Kellett, who now looks a little bit uncatchable by the air cell car. But what a performance by John Hayes at the 1.9 Persia, 2 of 5 GTI in second place. And then uh, in third place, the man who was in the front row of the grid, McGovern has had a superb drive because a Capri about this stage of the race begins to run out of brakes and uh, run out of handling. And Hayes is having a real go at the last couple of corners. This is going to be a sensational finish. Yes, Gordon seemed to be making the odd mistake down at Budweiser, and now he's let John right on his gearbox. I think John will take the advantage if, if, if he lets it go. So it's up to Dunlop, and it must be a late-breaking maneuver. Oh, oh, only way he can do it, no, but the turbo pulls away again. The Ford has the legs on the straight, and there isn't really a lot you can do. John working overtime, sliding the car right into the outside, but still close enough, but just too late. Here's the checkered flag. Yeah. Gordon Keller yeah, takes the checkered flag. John Haynes takes the championship. Uh, Thomas McGovern is third, uh, fourth, we have the other Capri, and then uh, a rather sad...